Hi, everyone. It's an incredible honor to receive this award. I'm still reeling from the news, and I'm somewhat speechless. It's an unbelievable thrill to share the Young Computer Architect Award with a list of amazing people who have gotten it in the past. At the same time, I'm also thinking of the people whose work this award really recognizes. I'm grateful to be the figurehead, but every bit of success that I've had in research is entirely due to the amazing people I've gotten to work with. I know it's a cliche, but it's a cliche for a reason. This award belongs to so many people who actually did the work and who shaped the way that I think. None more than my advisors, Luis Seza and Dan Grossman, from whom I learned everything that I know about how to do research. If you know Luis or Dan, you know that they're inspirations, and you can imagine what a privilege it was to learn from them. But also to other more informal mentors that I've learned from, like Colleen Koskival and Karen Strauss and Catherine McKinley and Todd Mitkowicz and here at Cornell, Chris Patton and Nate Foster, and to so many of you in the ISCA community that I can't possibly list all of you here. I've gotten so much advice from you over the years. And most importantly, this award recognizes research that was really completely done by the student researchers that I get to work with in my lab. This award is really for you, for Mark Buckler, Phil Badukian, Edwin Pigero, Dietrich Geisler, Sachil Atapatu, Alexa Van Haddam, Neil Adit, Ratchet Nigam, Serjing Lia, Griffin Brillstein, Sam Thomas, Ted Bauer, Irene Yoon, Vivi Ye, and so many more of you. You know who you are. With all of these incredible researchers in mind, I'm also thinking about life as a PhD student researcher in architecture, which can be amazing and full of discovery, but even at the exact same time, it can also be full of unique challenges, especially so over the past two years. PhD researchers are the lifeblood of every field in computer architecture. They're the energy that moves the science forward. Essentially, nothing would happen without them. And I'm really happy to see that our community is recognizing that we need to do more to support students to ensure that their amazing talents can turn into long-term success and into world-changing research. I'm particularly impressed with the new Computer Architecture Student Association group, or CASA, that's forging a cross-institution culture of inclusion and support among students. And I urge all of us ex-student members of the community to do what they can to support CASA and the Meet a Senior Architect mentoring system that Joel Emmer started, and the new UArch and YArch workshops and similar efforts, and making architecture a more inclusive and more supportive place to do research. Because architecture in 2021 is such a vital and exciting world. We all have a shared responsibility to lift up the next generation of architects and to include up and coming researchers from all walks of life. Our support has the potential to include brilliant minds that could otherwise miss the opportunity to do great architecture research. There is so much to do in architecture these days that we need all the help we can get. For me, the best thing about modern architecture is how wide open everything is. Architecture in the 21st century is an invitation to rethink everything, to challenge convention at every turn, to go all the way back to the System 360 and reevaluate every assumption that we've been building up since 1965. Which means, like no other field I know, you can do audacious, creative, convention-defying research, even at the occasional risk of being impractical. For example, I'm still so proud of the work that we did on approximate computing, in part because of how impossible it could sometimes seem at the time. And it did elicit a full range of emotions from disbelief to anger and sometimes even acceptance. We learned things in that work that we would never have learned if we had listened to our better angels and worked on something that was more clearly practical. A lesson I took away from that work is that speedups aren't everything. We should all, of course, strive to do research with real impact. But focusing too much on practicality and adoptability has its own risk of constraining your thinking to be too conservative. We all have that voice in our heads that asks, but am I being realistic? Would anyone really buy this? And turning down the volume on that voice just a little bit can really free your mind. It can let you do work on problems that no one else in the world would dare try and things that have a chance of changing the world. And at the same time, it's also just more fun than working within the existing conventions. Modern architecture gives everyone a license to try ideas that are weird and ambitious and potentially transformative, and we'd be silly not to take up that opportunity. So, many thanks again to everyone that I mentioned up top, and to Ariana Taylor Stanley, my wife and my continuous inspiration, to my parents, Ed and Elizabeth, who do not really care about computers but are still so patient with their nerdy child, to a set of junior faculty who started with me at Cornell without whom I could not have really survived the last few years, that's Christina Delamitru, Ruchet Agarwal, Kristen Peterson, and Emmanuel Trummer. And to my friends and collaborators in the Sample Lab, who, in a previous era, helped me survive grad school. Thank you to the award committee, and thanks to all of you in the architecture community. I will see you in Valencia next year.